Okay, once again, my friends, <laughs> this is absolutely amazing. The Higgs boson particle could prove the multiverse theory correct. This is uh, February 7th, 2022. This is only a couple of days ago. Don't forget now, the Higgs boson could prove the multiverse theory correct. This is amazing. All right, this is the visual from CERN of these Higgs boson fields, and they are just round circular fields that explode away from the impact of particles smashing together. This is smashing together, and this is the radiance, basically, of that interaction. We did it in a much more, you know, in a, in a completely different way. Instead of going head on, we forced them to come in and then crush in and smash into each other. And when they came out the other side, we got much better than that. All right, this is the way CERN does it. They take these big, gigantic particles. I mean, they're huge. They're just gigantic things compared to what we're, we're using light. And we, what we did was a completely different situation than they did. They took two big things and slammed them together, and then all the debris went flying, and then they could see all these circular fields. And they said, woo, woo, those are the Higgs bosons. Well, I can't disagree with that. However, they're using just a pile of trash smashing it together and digging through and finding all these little bits and pieces and have no clue where they originated. We started with light, which is basically the smallest particle that exists except the sublight particles. You got the subatomic and, and way down in the bottom of atomic sub is sub subatomic, which is light and electrons and muons and the little particles I'm going to show you. This was just very expensive, very complicated, and just a bunch of debris, a bunch of trash you can be digging through. We took light, and instead of hitting it head on, we forced it to come in a stream and then come together in such a, a crushing slit that everything exploded. When it came out the other side, it was just stunning, and I, you, I will stun you right now. And these are those particles coming at us. This is those Higgs fields. And why are we seeing a blue one here when it was all started out red? It's being crushed. You see? There's two Higgs pushing on another Higgs, forcing it to literally crush the particles and not allow them to expand, forcing them to squirt out, creating a, a, a more intense particle. The other ones are just coming at us like dinner plates. This one's being crushed together, and, and it squishes. And when it squishes, it elongates and, and squirts out like a toothpaste tube. All right, so now this is what we did. We took a laser and forced it through a venturi, which I told you made it come down and crush together, and then they squirt it out. And this is what squirted it out. And the other parts, these little black parts, did not. They went around. These are, I agree, Higgs bosons. And they are the, the explosive part of light. The black part is not explosive. It's just concussive. All right, now try to understand this. We are looking directly into the Venturi. The Venturi is nothing more than on the other side of this basically wall. There's a very tiny orifice, and it comes together like this into a slit that just is just basically the size of light. And the dark particle cannot get through that slit. I'll show you the dark particle. It won't go through. These are only the white particles. And that's why it's so brilliant. And these are the Higgs fields, which is the God particle, they call it. Now, see that particle? That one didn't go the same way all the rest of them went. There's a spin. There's a right-hand spin. That, I believe, is a left-hand spinner, which means instead of throwing its field outward, it's cap capturing its field inside of itself. And then when it concussed with one of these, it did something very strange. But these are the Higgs fields. And these right here are just prior to them concussing, coming back to life. In this part right here, they are raw energy. Let's take a look at it close up. All right, this gives us a pretty good shot of the whole situation. This is just right 
pulse of red lasers coming through, and you, it creates a wave in front of the particle. I'll show you the particle in a second. But when we accelerated, the particle, which is right here, pulled itself right out of the wave and it exceeded the magnetic field that normally would precede it because it's a magnetic field coming through the air. Here's the field. Well, all of a sudden it went and it went out past the field. The field has stopped. We're ahead of the field. And that's what creates this kind of a reaction, which is to separate the black particles from the white. And you say, what black particles? I'll show you in a second. But here they are right here. These are those black particles. And those black particles come right back together here, like almost instantaneously, with a vengeance. Alright, this is absolutely critical you understand this. This is light coming in. It has no certain definition, but it is certainly a dark and a white particle together. And the dark particle is, in my opinion, dark matter. It is the boson, the carrier, the non-reactive part. It's a slammer, and it is gravity, case closed. The white part is what? It's a glower. It glows. It expands. It can, concre can concuss and, and, and illuminate. The black does absolutely nothing other than stay its exact same size, no matter what it does. And as it comes forward, they start to stack up the whites against the white, because the white is what pushes back. The black just wants to attract. It has no push, no shove. Oh, well, it does have a push and a shove as a mass, but it does not have a push and a shove as a magnetic particle. This one does. The white one is a pusher and a shover of energy, not a pusher and a shover of mass. This white particle is 100% is different than the black, but they are attached together and then if you crush them in a venturi like we did right here, we can make them separate. And the black and the white can come right apart and they do not want to be apart. They, th that's why they say it is like 200 at least times energy between separating them and when they come back together. And if you can get in between that, you can take that 200 times. And I say, I think we can take that 200 times. Don't forget, here's our laser. And it's shooting out these little waves, just like this. Just as a laser, it didn't do anything, no, it didn't, no big deal. You don't want to shoot it in your eyeball, but it's not going to create any big energy source. However, we forced it into this little restriction, which is so tiny that only the white particles can get through. And there's that right there. You see, remember, it exceeded its... It's, it had to accelerate to get through this. It's called a venturi. And it's not an unknown principle. It's totally un understood. Now, what is that particle like? Well, there's the particle right there. There it is. And I showed you before. It had no definition. As it starts to stack up, it gets brighter and brighter, and then it explodes. And when it explodes, is right here. The black stays away. This black can't get through this little slit. And I'll show you the particle itself. The white can, can expand and it can crush. The black just one size fits all. And here's your Higgs fields. And that's right here. Here to here is the white. You see from here to here, totally white. You can't, you always seen the spits. And then, bam. Well, what does bam mean? <laughs> What does that mean? Well, let's get it again. Pam! <laughs> this is where the black balls start to come back together with the white. And you can see it. I, I could show you this all in extreme detail. And, and then they talk about, you know, color, chromodynamics, and all this. The blue is extremely fast. You can't really make out the particle of the blue, but it's just very fast. And here it's coming in fast, and then it smashes and it starts to slow down, I believe one or the other. Now, um, let's take a couple more little quicker shot, looker shots in here. We'll, oh, ooh, 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 this one I want to show you. Because this is... Remember I showed you the one I said it was spinning the wrong way and dragging the field into itself? I believe that's it right there. And that's the particle coming in. Not, none of them were white. No, they were all those circular fields. And then this thing hit. And then that happened. Now, that is... To me, that's an antimatter matter conversion. I, <laughs> I don't know what else to think about it. I have no other clue. Why is this thing so compacted and glowing like that? 
And why is it when it interacts with this, what is a field? That's a magnetic field. And, and that's the reason you see these glowy little stripes is because the magnetism of the spin, push, 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 push. And anytime you push something and it shoves back, you get a glow. That's what this glow is, push to shove, push to shove, push to shove. That's what these are. That's what Higgs fields are, is push to shove particles. And you can actually see them in their own little encapsulated push, 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 push. You can see the little bumps. That go, that's the magnetic interactions. And if we can get in the middle of this, remember I told you, if we can get right in the middle of that, between when it separates and when it comes back together, if we can get right into between there, we can force those particles to go through our circuits before they get back to the other side and drive motors and pumps and cars and airplanes and heating, air conditioning and lighting and anything you want to do that requires energy. And you could carry it around in your hand like that in a little box because what I'm showing you right there will fit in a shoebox. The whole thing. And you'd have enough energy, I'm probably in a shoebox at least. I would think you could power your car. And you just carry it around with you. You just leave it in the car. I mean, these things are dimes. A few dollars you could build this. All right, I just want to be sure you understand. I have every right to talk in this realm. I did all this stuff. I could draw all the doodles and do all the little things that they do. I, I, and I read all the same things they read. And not a single bit of it made sense. And that's, you go, go to uh, Yale University um, quantum physics, the first thing the professor says, nobody understands it, just say what I say, you're going to be okay. And basically that's it. He says, nobody understands it. Because it doesn't make sense. What they're telling us is it's just totally wrong. And I have come up with the answers and the solutions, and I refuse to be heard. And it's transfer of energy is from light to atomic vapor. There's nothing more than dipoles. There's 100% dipoles in the universe until you split them like we did through that Venturi. That is a very exceptional, but a very instant change. I don't think you can carry that on for very... Well, I mean, we can if, if we continue to do what we're doing through the Venturi. I mean, I don't see where you can go forever doing that. But that's not going to happen in nature. All right, and they've never seen this. It's just an accident. We did it and then realized what we did. So I think we should look a little deeper. That's all I'm saying.